Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now, Iron Hands get kind of a bum rap as being boring black space marines, but I don't think that necessarily has to be the case. On the Warhammer community page where they introduce the Iron Hands Legion for the Horus Heresy, there's four different ways of painting them demonstrated, and this is a fifth altogether. The range which you have in what you can do with black space marines might be surprising, and I think this one might be worth having a play around with if you like the look. So as always, all of the paints will be listed in the description below, along with the recipe for the base, which you should let dry before taking photos of, let's say. <laughs> but let's get started. Well, if you're painting a legion which is predominantly black, no great surprise, I've primed this in black. Now, Chaos Black or Matte Black from the Army Painter, it's not going to matter. Black is black is black. I'm going to start off. Now, I'm going to use here, this is uh, Metallic Black from Vallejo Model Metallic Air Range. Anywhere that you can get Vallejo stuff, you'll be able to pick that up. If you can't get your hands on it, then I recommend check out the mix I used in the Anvils of the Heldenhammer video. Just a little bit of lead belcher mixed into some black and you'll get a similar effect. What I'm using this for is mostly to make the black a little more interesting without having to do a lot to it. So you'll see this goes on. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> you'll see this goes on really quickly uh, and you can just smash it over the entire miniature. It does not take long to do and uh, you do not need to be careful at all. Now, once that's been applied, it is a little shiny on camera, uh, but that is way more interesting to look at as a black miniature than just flat black would be. I really like this, and when it's shaded, it's going to become even more dull, which will really suit the look. When it comes to painting extra details on the Iron Hands, I'm going to turn, conveniently enough, there's a color called Iron Hands Steel. Uh, so I'm going to paint trim and such like this with a nice bright steel color. Anywhere that's going to be a functional metallic area. So these vents, parts of the bolter and what have you. But as befits the character of the Iron Hands, I would suggest don't add very much of this in a decorative sense. Just stick to parts which look like they should be working metal. And the rest leave black. You'll see aside from the shoulder trim and that bit on the gorget, everything else I've painted black is in some way functional. I don't want a lot of ornamentation. What I have here is one of my big soft makeup brushes. This is a Lux pencil, which I thoroughly recommend. If you're going to do a lot of dry brushing, get a set of makeup brushes. They work brilliantly. I've prepped this up with some Necron compound, and I'm just going to dry brush along the edge of my base to get a feel of what I'm going to leave behind. And then lightly, over the entire miniature, just a little bit of Necron compound over both silver and black. Now, I'm not particularly worried about whether I catch edges or if this smears anywhere because it's just gonna it's gonna blend together with the metal underneath quite nicely so around we go let's brighten this up just a little because when we shade this this is going to come together so well after a couple of passes around the miniature this is what you're going to have and you'll see i've caught the edges on some of the legs and uh, back of the hands and what have you but there is also a little bit of chalkiness on some of the flatter areas, so shoulder pads and the top of his head, which ordinarily I'd be trying to avoid. But with the iron hands, I want that chalkiness. This next step is going to make that look a little more like rough iron. So instead of using the marine juice, which I've done in most of the other heresy painting guides, I have here Agrax Earthshade, because I'm looking for a specific color. So let's load my brush up and generously over the entire miniature. Just start splattering this on. Really work it into your recesses, of course. And then we're going to leave this for about half an hour in the sun to dry. Now we're cooking. We've got a little bit of visual interest to that black. It's much deeper than it was previously. And yeah, that looks pretty cool to me. Before you go ahead and add any decals though, what I'm going to do is add a layer of Storm Shield. You could just as easily use a gloss varnish like Art Coat. The reason why I'm doing this is twofold. First off, it's going to give you a smoother surface for your decals to adhere to, which is always good, makes it a little bit easier. And secondly, some of the decal softening agents out there like Microsol or uh, Vallejo's decal medium, uh, they have a little bit of alcohol in them, which is going to essentially melt through and lift off <laughs> the shade we've just applied. So 
Varnishing this first isn't just for the benefit of making it easier to stick the decal on. Now the decals I'm going to apply are a little, <laughs> these are a little over eight years old, so uh, I'm going to need to fuss with these a little bit. They've gone a little bit janky after all that time. So if you have got access to molded shoulder pads or something which have the icons on them already, that might be a much easier solution. Now I've done videos on applying transfers before, so I'll link to those in the description. But yeah, time for me now to uh, have a little bit of fun trying to put this mangled mess on this Space Marine. Now if you're smarter than I am, you'll use decals that aren't a million years old. Uh, the transfers which Games Workshop have been coming out with recently are much better, I do have to admit, but these I had them to hand. We'll move on now, and there's really not very much left to do with this guy. I have some white scar and a nice small layer brush. What I'm going to do is paint in across the visor here, and it's easiest I find if you start by going one way to about the midpoint, and then flip them around and go the other way. Whether you're painting one long lens like this, or you've got individual eye lenses like on most marines, the flip them upside down to reach one side more easily will work, so have a play with that. I've got now Talisar Blue, and contrast is how I paint pretty much all my marine eyes these days. Got a little bit much on there. Let's pop that in there. And if I splurge over on the edges, what I'll do is just grab a little bit of that metallic black from earlier and tidy up. And by most accounts, that's now a finished iron hand. But we'll take it a little further from here. What I have is some iron breaker, and you could just as easily use iron hand steel again, but iron breaker I tend to find is a little bit lighter. What I'm going to do is just pick out some of the extreme edges of the metallic stuff. Uh, and funnily enough, you can also use this to highlight the black. You don't need to highlight a whole straight line though, so just flick along the edge a little, and then rough it up to make it look like it's been dinged around and chipped. Now in particular, when it comes to highlighting the um, black stuff, just load up your brush with a little bit of silver, and then instead of painting a straight line, just little chippy dabs. Chippy, that is the technical term, chippy dabs. <laughs> Yeah, which will give you a nice rough edge, and rather than looking like highlight, it's going to look like dinged up metal. You can do plenty of this, or you can do none of this, it's up to you. Now as a final touch for weathering with iron hands, if we were to go ahead and use the chipping effect that I normally do for marines, it's not going to show up on these guys. You know, putting dark brown over black won't work. So what I have here, this is light rust. It's a liquid pigment from Green Stuff World, and I just happen to have it to hand, and I'm going to give it a shot here. I have uh, fooled around with this on other stuff fairly recently, and discovered that about half and half water and the uh, the rust effect is kind of the best best concentration. It will look pretty extreme going on, but as it dries, you're going to get a pretty cool finish. Now, personally, I'm not a huge fan of like really rusty weapons. It seems well, it seems a bad way to fight a war, you know? <laughs> uh, but most of the, even the official stuff featuring Iron Hands uh, tends to have a fair bit of grime on them, so I'm just going to add a little bit of this to some joints and some of the rivets where we get some dripping. And I quite like this as a way of getting a little bit of color onto what are otherwise fairly dull miniatures. Uh, but it is up to you. So, let's apply a little of this and come back once it has dried. Now once that dries, it's going to look a lot more subtle, and instead of bright orange, we get this neat, really ominous sort of looking rustiness in the recesses. It's super cool. If you can't get your hands on it, of course, then scrag brown, watered down, will still do the trick, or red leather from, the, from Vallejo is another really good suggestion there. Anyhow, that's now a painted marine. What I'm going to do is take him outside, hit him with a matte varnish, and I'm going to pop a base on him. The recipe for that will be in the description. Let's get a look at what he looks like when he is all finished. And so, at last, our iron hand is complete. And I've had a lot of fun painting this guy. I think it's easy to look at black as being something which will be boring, no matter what you do to it. But with a little bit of forethought, I think you can add quite a lot to the miniature, without having to worry about whether or not it looks right. 
And I really should have waited for that dab of PVA glue to dry on his base, but we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> so, as always, thank you very much to Exit23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of the wonderful patrons who are keeping me ticking in glue and paints and space marines, including my wonderful producers, Alan Nuttall, Kyrie Crawford, Trainboy, Rod, and Jimmy. Your support means the world, folks. Any questions or anything, feel free. Drop them in the old comments box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, one and all, and you will enjoy the rest of your day.